My name is Dr. Kevin White, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about a chronic pain condition called fibromyalgia, or fibrositis. Did you know that 1 in 10 women and roughly 1 in 60 men will develop this condition over the course of their lifetime? All ages get it, including children, and it exists worldwide. An estimated 100 million people have it across every continent. And yet, one in four doctors believes that fibromyalgia doesn't exist, that it isn't real, that all these people are faking. Fibromyalgia has been called some really nasty names, like an illusionary entity, a common non-entity, the disease with no clothes, the syndrome of feeling out of sorts, and a useful illness, implying that some people are using the diagnosis of fibromyalgia to get things or maybe get out of things. For example, maybe they want sympathy or understanding or not to have to explain why they're, why they're depressed or maybe to get money thrown at them or maybe they want to get out of family responsibilities or marital responsibilities or work responsibilities or work altogether. It's been called a fabrication of the North American court system and big business for plaintiff lawyers, again implying that people fake fibro to get large disability or injury compensation settlements. But if this actually were so, why is fibromyalgia more common in poor countries like Pakistan, Poland, and Bangladesh than in rich, richly insured countries like the West? Why is it twice as common among the uninsured people who live in Brazil as in those who have insurance? And why does it exist at all in the Amish, a population that refuses all insurance? Over the past 20 years, numerous researchers around the world, including myself, have been studying fibromyalgia, trying to understand this condition and asking questions like, is it physical or is it psychological? Are there any detectable and measurable changes that occur in the body that prove the condition is real? This research is very important because it's easy to understand pain in the person who has a broken leg or a big swollen elbow. But if you understand pain in the person who looks normal, then you actually understand pain. The research findings have overwhelmingly come to two main conclusions. First, that fibromyalgia is real. And second, that it is a physical disease with real physiological changes in the body. Reproducible abnormalities have been identified in those with fibro that can be seen on special imaging scans like spec scans and functional MRIs, in electrical brainwave activity, in blood flow and energy use in certain parts of the brain, and in various chemicals called neurotransmitters in the brain in the spinal cord, in the spinal fluid, in muscle, and in the blood. We've even identified a genetic defect in families where fibro is especially common. So why do so many doctors still not believe in it? Why do some governments and insurers and lawyers and employers and co-workers and even some friends and family not believe in it? The answer is simple. They haven't seen the proof that fibro is real. I'm trying to change all that. Please go to www.thefibrofog.com and see what I'm doing to increase public awareness about fibro while raising money to help find a cure. Thank you.